And away we go. Those wanting to subscribe, subscribe. Here we go. First term in a geometric sequence is negative 13. So what are we doing here, gentlemen? We are multiplying by negative 2. So if you multiply by negative 2 each time, you form a geometric sequence. And the last one would be the sixth one would be negative 208 times negative 2 because everything's times negative 2 and you get 416 correct choice is D they love number 2 it is a popular question when we translate something 7 units to the left that means we are subtracting 7 from the X coordinate and what are we doing? We're subtracting 5 from the Y. So the answer is clearly F. 6 days of working, 4 and a half hours. That's 4 and a half times 6. I've showed that in class before, how to uh, make 4 and a half out of your fracas. So you go four and one half, yes, times six, and that gives you 27 hours. But you also work another day where you're one third of the other days. So it's 27 hours plus one third of four and a half. And how much would that be? That would be one third times, and you can enter four and a half again. I just like doing 4.5, really. And you get 1.5 more hours. So, what is the answer? Is 27 plus 1.5 choice B? This is a classic ratio proportion. Five pounds of coffee will serve you 210 servings. So how many pounds do you need to make 70? Cross multiply, uh, you get 350 equals 210x. So the answer is 350 divided by 210. Anything with classic recipe like that is always, oh, better math of fracca. Or, but what did they want? I think they wanted it as a mixed number, huh? So you go alpha y equals 3. All of that's been in our class. And you get 1 and 2 thirds for the answer. Bob, bop. 5. Looks like a midpoint, but it's not a coordinate system. It's just all straight through. So what's the distance between t right here? And the middle of RS. Well, the middle of RS, since RS is 10, would be 5. So the answer would be 5 plus 18, 23. Distribute and add like terms. Distribute the P. You get 2P minus PR plus 8P minus 8R. Anything add? Well, the P's do. 2p, and uh, that would make 10p, uh, and that's all, folks. The PR doesn't add to anybody, so the right answer is K. 7 confused me when I first looked because we had at least one cat or one dog, so that's 13 and 24, and then there were 7 people who had both types of pets, so that is to be added to get 44. So how many people did not, not not, no cat, no dog, so they're not responding yes. So it's 50 minus 44, 6 for the correct answer, B. 8 is a classic. You've got uh, 6 pairs of leggings, 2 shoes, and 6 shirts. Uh, they make the point they all go together well, so I didn't care if they went together anyway. I'm just going to multiply them. 
So it would be six choices times two choices times six. That's a classic. We've seen that in practice tests. Ratio, and I'm going to do this on the calculator. That's Alaska, biggest state in the union, and I think Rhode Island's the smallest. So when we do this ratio, what do we do? I go fracca, alpha y equals, and on the top I put Alaska, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the fifth, right? And on the bottom is little bitty, uh, did I write that right? 1.5 times 10 to the 3 and that will give me the ratio I don't have to do anything 440 now that is implied as a ratio as what 440 over 1 huh so the answer is B 10 they like to play with you a little bit uh, it's 64 uh, wide by 48 inches. B has three fourths the size. So you multiply each of those fellows times three fourths. 64 times three fourths will give you uh, 48. And 48 times three fourths will give you 36. Now there's a third rectangle, <laughs> and the third rectangle is three-fourths of the second. So what do you do? You times both of them by three-fourths. Forty-eight times three-fourths, and what was the other one? Thirty-six times uh, three-fourths, so you get the answer thirty-six. And what's 36 times 3 fourths would be 27. Now, what did they ask for? The perimeter. Backtrack a little bit. And when you get perimeter, you add all four sides. Whenever I'm doing perimeter, I like to write all four so I don't forget. And I get 126 for the answer. Hey, here's power to a power. What do we do? Multiply. So it's 3 times 6 is 18. Bada bang, we're rolling. All right, what's this? This looks like a box to me, huh? The box is 78 by 75 by 5. So I have to fill the box with air. That's a volume problem, huh? So I go box, and what were those 78? 75 and 5, thank you. And box gets to be used. Was that our first program of the day? The volume is 292.50. And what does it say about it? I can pump 100 cubic inches uh, per second. So you divide that by 100, huh? When you divide it by 100, you fill up the balloon with uh, in 292 seconds. Aha! 293, huh? Modeling. Modeling is uh, ratio proportion. So the scale model of the house is 48 feet 32 feet and 30 feet that's the height and the model is 8 inches long so instead of 48 feet it's 8 inches so how wide should the model be the width is 32 so 32 is to X right modeling ratio proportion so 48x cross multiply is 8 times 32 divided by what was that number 48 and that should give us the answer unless I screwed up it's 5.3 
five and one third, huh? How am I doing so far? This is a circular. It's the old pie chart, huh? So if I'm half the number of people, you give me half the pie, the angle would be half of 360, 180. So here the angle is 144. So that would be something like, what would be 144? Something like that, huh? Because you would be 144 degrees of 360. Everything in a circle is based on 360 degrees. So is the 144. So if the 144 is proportioned to 360, I get 0.4. And what is point four, y'all? Forty percent. Huh? We're cruising. Fifteen is a classic Sokotoa. Here's the angle. We're looking for the height. See where they put the question mark. Chiefs say we want the opposite. Chiefs say we have the adjacent. Chief no want the hypotenuse. So that's out of dodge. Huh? So we use tangent, right? The tangent of 50 degrees is equal to what? X over 15. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. We talked about that in the course. So what is the answer they're looking for? Cross multiply. It would be 15 times the tangent of 50. Huh? And these are approximated. Sometimes they just want that answer. I get 17.87 rounds to 18. Huh? Yeah, they want x equal 3, so you plug in 3. huh? Plug in for x3, solve for y. 3 times 3. Now you subtract 9 from both sides. You get negative 4y is negative 3. You divide by negative 4. The negatives cancel, and the answer is 3 fourths. Da 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 da! A program. What kind of equation is this class? Excellent. It's a quadratic, huh? So I'm going to use quad 2002 and carefully enter the right numbers. Huh? In quad 2002, you get what? 1, negative 1, and you got to kick that 12 over. So it would be x squared minus x minus 12, and that would be 1 negative 1, and negative 12. Ta-da! Negative 3 and 4. Choice D. They've been loving this one, huh? Remember seeing this in our prep? It's the area of the triangle. So you have to turn your computer sideways. When I, when I used to get it, I turned the book sideways. Because this here is my base, and the base, because it's going straight down, is just the difference in the y's. So it's 11 minus 3. Altitude. The altitude is just the difference in the x's, 8 minus 5, or 3. You got me? So you could use area of triangle program. Uh, 8 and 3 are the entries. The altitude is 3 and the base is 8. Or use 1 half altitude base to get the answer 12. Hey, 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 another program. Why? Excellent. They're looking for the slope of the line. So everybody say slope, 0, 2, and 8, 5 for the players. 0, 
two, eight, five. Ain't you glad you took the course? Three eighths is the slope. And again, no errors made. Ooh, this one was gnarly. When you get undefined, that means the bottom can't be zero, huh? And a squared plus one is never going to be zero, because a squared can equal negative one, unless it's what? The square root of negative one, our imaginary number i. 21. If you missed 21 and you took my class, we did the exact same problem. They're looking for the least number, so I start with 24. When we divide by 5, the remainder is 3. Uh-uh. When I divide 25 by 24 by 5, the remainder is 4. Hasta la vista, baby. 35, you ain't no good either. When I divide you by 5, it's clean. 43's got a shot. Because 43, when I divide by 5, I get 8 with a remainder of 3. Remainder of 7, when I divide by 9, oh God, that would be 4, 36. Yep, remainder of 7, huh? So 43 fits my bill. Answer C. 22, we see it a lot. Not really, but we do least common multiple every test. If a lightning flashes every three seconds and the other one's every eight seconds, this is how some folks do it. They take three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and the other one flashes every 8, 16, 24, bada bang. Now all it is, it's the LCM of 3 and 8. Let's look at it on my programs, because you know I like to show them off. I go to LCM, and it's the LCM of 3 and 8. Whoops, they want three numbers, so what do you do? Just put the 8 twice. Twenty threes right off a of practice test. A number will be selected randomly from A. Well, how many numbers is that? Six. So what is the probability that it'll be both in B and in C? Well, the only one in B and C is two, huh? One six. That's what you meant, because one-third wasn't on there. Hey, 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 this was part of our review, huh? Right? To quote the Reverend Kevin Dyer, hey, 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 all you do is take three sixteenths and do what? Average them, huh? So it would be three sixteenths. What was that other number? 7 over 32, halfway between is the average. So what do you do? Add them up. <clears throat> 3 over 16 plus 7 over 32. Add them up. Choo, choo. And divide by 2. And now my favorite button. I haven't hit it all day. Matha. Braca, 13 over 64. Where is that? Right here. Watch out for this one. It's the area of circle program. They're looking for the area, but what's the radius? Since it's tangent right here, it's the x difference. So the radius is 3. So it would be 9 pi, or what you would get when you enter 3 in the area of circle program. So there's area of circle, there's 3, 
and the answer is 9 pi. This is all going on live, not on tape. An eight-sided game with one through eight is rolled twice. So what's the chance that an eight is rolled both times? So the first chance is what, fellas? One eighth, and the second roll would be and what do you do to two events that are independent? You times them. 1 over 64. I hate this one, but it is simple. 3x minus 2 to the 4th is what? Squared, squared. So I'll square it right here. And I'll square it right here. And now they want the answer to the x fourth term, which is just when I superfoil it. It's just the first number, huh? I don't have to do the rest because nobody else is going to reach four, right, y'all? Excellent. The old pendulum. If a big guy gets on the pendulum, on the fulcrum, and sits on the end of the board, it's going to tilt toward his side. But not if the distances times the weight are equal, then it balances. So 60 is bow, is at three and a half feet, and Tia is not as big as bow. She's two-thirds of him. Two-thirds times 60 is 40. So she will have to sit how far away? 40 times X is 60 times 3 and a half. So mathematically, not too hard. 60 times, you want to see Fracca? 3 and 1 half. I would just do 3.5. And you divide it by 40, and you get the answer. Uh, 5.25, math frac, and if you want it as a mixed number, you go alpha y equal 3. Which one do they want? This one is a revisited one. It's solved the equation and plug it back in. Uh, anybody wants to use equation solver is welcome, but I don't think you need it. It's 3x is add 3, negative 3. Is x negative 1? And then you plug it into 9 times x minus 2, and you get negative 11. Choice B. Y'all playing along? The area of the shaded region, it's always the whole thing minus the inside hole. I call it the donut problem. So the whole rectangle is, you're adding one on each side, so it's 5 plus 2, 7. And the whole thing here, because you only have the border on one side, is 6. And the hole on the inside is 5 times 5. So it's just 7 times 6 minus 5 times 5, or 17. Ooh, I hated this one. I set it up as I wrote everything down. So the sum of A and B is 5. The sum of A and C is 8. And the sum of B and C is 7. So I didn't know what to do. I just started playing with it. So I took down here, I said C is 7 minus B. And then I solved this one for A. I actually solved it for B. 
So B is 5 minus A. So I got C is 7 minus B, who is 5 minus A. This is classic substitution. And I got C equals 7 minus 5 is 2 plus A. So what did I do then? I substituted here into here. So A plus 2 plus A is 8. 2A plus 2 is 8. A ends up being 3. Because 2A would be 6. Divide by 2, A is 3. Then I sub it up. If A is 3 right here, doesn't C have to be 5? There are probably better ways to work that out, but I was just hacking from the get-go. Hey, look at this question. They just want the conjugate. Do you know how to construct a conjugate? You just change the sign in the middle, and it's 2 minus 3i. It's a special name because when multiplied, the ugliness cancels. I didn't know how to present this one to y'all because we want to know when it's zero. The best way I know that I would tell you is to factor. Plugging and chugging would be a great idea. You could stow them all and plug them in. Great idea. Let me show you the factoring. If you split it down the middle, you could take out the x squared. And you could take out the 9. Since x minus 10 is a common factor, there's your answer, 10. There's also something I should show you called polysimal. It's an app on your calculator, and I haven't used it much. It's Poly Root Finder. Hey, it's set to 3, so that's perfect. You go next, and you just enter the coefficients. So what were they? Help me. 1 was the first one. Negative 10. 9. Negative 90, and it'll solve it for you. Two of the answers are imaginary numbers. The 10 is a real number. But, man, I haven't used that in a long time. 34, I'm sitting there racking my brain. They're just defining subtraction. This is so stupid. Subtraction is the addition of the opposite. So the choice is J. That's it. I was sitting there racking my brain over the absolute value. They're just defining subtraction. 35, did you know you could enter this straight into the calculator? It's the square root of 9 fourths. Oh, let me get out of here. Quit app. So it's the square root of 9 fourths. Could have put it as a fracca. Minus, how do you do cube root? It's under math. 4. The cube root of negative 1 over 8. Bada bing. Straight into the calculator. Answers 2. Ooh, we haven't seen this before. Yes, we have. It's H of F of. So what do you do, gang? You copy the F. What's F? Negative X minus 4. And you plug it in in X's spot in H. So it's negative 2X minus 8 plus 3. Boom. Negative 2X. Oop. I checked the wrong one, didn't I? It's negative 2x, not positive 2x, goofball. That's how you miss stuff, working too fast. 
but that would never happen to me in real life, right? Wrong. Uh, the cosine. Guys, you need to know how to do an angle. What's KJL? That's this angle right here, huh? And cosine requires you know the hypotenuse, which you can do using one of my programs. You just go to H and enter the two numbers, 9 and 7. And that will give you the hypotenuse of the triangle, square root of 130, as if you didn't know. Now, what's cosine? This is opposite. This is adjacent. This is obviously the hypotenuse. And Chief Sokotoa says cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse choice D. Uh-oh. Let's see what's going on here. All the squares are 18 by 18. So when we get to the fourth square, it's not 4 by 4, but 4 times 18, huh? I get 72 by 72. Now be careful. They want the answer in square feet. You got to know it when you go 72 times 72, right? You know that's not right. So it's 5,184 inches squared. Now, who knows how to do this to feet? Because it's squared, you got to divide by 12 twice. Huh? Thirty-six. Here's the poop on that. If something is one foot by one foot, then the same thing is 12 inches by 12 inches. So one foot squared is actually 144 inches squared. That's why I had to do the 12 twice. Got me? Oh, my own students were complaining about this. It's just a stove. So when I go 4 cross 5, you just put the 4 in for A and the 5 in for B, and you get 4 plus 5 squared 29. Now, what's the answer? Exactly. So that's 4 plus 3 squared is 13. So it would then be 13 cross 5, which is what? 13 plus 5 squared. So it would be 38 choice B. Used to prepare for that, they would ask it every test, but I hadn't seen it in a while, so regrettably, I don't remember doing that with y'all. But they used to always invent some symbol, and that meant to stow it. You want to see it with stow? Um, you would go four and three, you would go four stow a. and 3 stow B, and then you would just type the expression A plus B squared, and that would be how you did the first one. I'll let you do the second one. This one's a little confusing. I like to make stuff up. A is a positive integer greater than 1. B is a negative integer. So what's 3 to the minus 2 is 3 squared flipped. You could even do that on your calculator. It's not 0. 
It's definitely not negative. It's definitely not irrational. It's a fraction, huh? And it also ain't an integer. So that worked. The answer's positive. All right, the test is about to get hard. What the heck is going on? Mileage out is when I leave. And mileage in is when I... Return, huh? Ben forgot to do the numbers. So what are his numbers? 499 in, huh? I'm sorry, 499 when he went out, and what? 736 when he got in, huh? So how we go? How far did the truck travel on June the 20th? Well, it must have gone over the uh, amount, huh? So it would be... 11 to get to a thousand so 256 because it would be 11 plus 245 the thing doesn't turn over when it gets to a thousand did it say that no oh it's just the last three digits so it serves me right for not reading but i still figured it out all right, what's this? The figure below represents the route traveled on July 16th. So that's the day. Wait, that's after all this is over, huh? He drove 75 miles due north. Stop. 40 east, stop. On his return trip, he drove a straight road from the last stop. So how far would that be? So it would be 75 plus 40 plus 105. And what do you do about that last distance, y'all? 40. This is 75, so 30. Ha ha, there it is. It's the 3, 4, 5. So if you used hypot, you would get 50. So 50. They just want the return trip, huh? So it's 50 at 50 miles an hour. So it's 50 divided by 50, which is 1. Crazy question, huh? The average of the hours away was 5.5. How many times have I told you average is total? So, uh, there's five of the drivers, right? So, if the average is five, the total is 27.5. And you take the 27.5 and you subtract all of these to get Ben. So, that would be 27.5 minus 11 minus 11.25 so I think it's going to give you 4 or no 5.25 for the distance away hey 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 30 60 90 so the 90 is 6, so 30 is half of 6, 60 would be 3 root 3, 
So the area would be 1 half 3 root 3 times 8, which is 12 root 3. You could also do Sokotoa to it and get Sokotoa would get you this answer x sine of 60 is x over 6 which would make 6 sine 60 the altitude and the base would be 8 so you would times it by 8 and then divide by 2 and then you'd have to match that up to the answer 12 radical 3. So there you go. Twenty courses and the grade point average is 3.15. Average is total. So if you times it, don't worry about it, I got y'all. I'll cover it for you. Go win the game. That's all I care about. Yes, sir. We weren't going to see, see you until like the exam. Uh, you'll see me at the game. I'll be there. I'll give you everything. So 63 is the total points. Now I'm going to plug and chug this. If she made four A's. That would be 4 at 4, and 16 at 3, that would be 16 plus 48, 64. So the answer must be 3 A's, or rather 3 A's, and 17 B's. So there you go. You get 63. Moving right along, the right circular cylinder has a height of 5, so the volume is always the area of the base times the height. The height is 5, and the base is a semicircle. Semicircle is half a circle, radius 3, so the area of the circle would be 9 pi. So the answer would be 9 pi times 5, except it's a semicircle, so it's half of 9 pi. So it's 45 over 2, which you need. Log rules. Division of logs because logs are exponents are subtraction. So you subtract the logs, that's all, folks. Division of logs is subtraction. You get the answer. Here you plug in. A is 1 and negative 1. So you plug in 1 for A, and you get what? Negative B is 1, rather negative B, so B is negative 1. Plug in A is negative 1, and you get the same answer. Negative 3B is 3. B is negative 1 no matter what. So the answer is given there. Negative 1, 49 is B. Cost of address. Cost to produce it. Now I'm going to load up. This was hard for me to read, but I'm putting... Uh, the dresses in order 
So how many dresses can go first? Second, because each one is reducing. So it ends up being five times four times three times two times one, which is 120. It's also called five factorial. It's used in counting in probability. There it is, factorial, 120. This one confused me too. It's 20% off the price. So which one would give you original price 15 more than producing B? So B was $25. So we want an original price of, uh, or rather the sale price would be 40. So you could plug and chug all of these, but it would be uh, easiest to just go X the price minus 0.2X is equal to 40. And that answer would be 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0.8x, because it's 20% off, equal 40. And the answer is 40 divided by 0 0.8, which is 50. Average labor cost. So I times all of these by 40, or I could just add them up and times them by 40. So this would be 40, 85, 145, 210. All of them are 40% off. So it would be 210 times 0.4. So you would subtract 84 from 210 to get the answer, which is 126 for five days. So it would be 25.2 or 25.20. Remember, we're adding and dividing by 5. Okay? Now, this is a conversion. We travel 60.5 feet in 0.5 seconds. So we want to convert feet to miles. One mile is 5,280 feet. They gave us that. What they didn't give us is how many seconds are in an hour. It's 3,600 because it's 60 times 60. Feet cancel. Seconds cancel. And you're left with miles per hour. So there are all your numbers to type in. It would be 60.5 times 3,600. Don't forget to divide by 0.5 and 5,280. 82.5. Vector, the vector u is 1 over and 2 up v is 1 over and 1 down. So when I add them, u plus v, I get 2 comma 1. So which of these vectors is 2 over and 1 up? It's over here, Q. This would confuse the heck out of me. It's a line Y equal RX. Now here's the deal. They can't touch, so R has got to go like this, and S has to go like that. 
the reason is they both have to have a y-intercept of zero. So the first slope is a rise of four and a run of two. The next one is a rise of three and a run of three. So what's the difference between the two slopes would be 2 minus 1, 1. Remember the slopes are sitting next to the line R and S. I don't even want to talk about this one. I had to ask a faculty member. It's called a uniform. I was between normal and uniform. Normal would be the bell curve. It ain't doing that because all the numbers are likely to be driven, uh, it's likely to be a very close to a tie. So it would be a uniform as long as it's a fair generator. In other words, it's not more likely to generate a six than a five. This one got me. The distance is so you see 5 minus 2, and I assume that was the x difference. It was the y difference. And this one is 3 minus minus 4. So the choice is A. So everybody ages 5 years. So the average, if everybody ages 5 years, is going to be M plus 5. But is the deviation going to change? No, because everybody's going to be five years older. So the standard deviation ain't moving. The average is up by five. Hey, 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 look at this. The center is 5-3. So tell me about those foci. They have to be inside the circle. It's actually on the longer axis, so it would be on this axis right here. Zero is out. One is in, but it has to be on that line right here, on the major axis. So it's D. Conversions. If I ran three miles in 24 minutes, miles per hour is three miles in 24 sixtieths of an hour. So if you take three, uh, let's do it fracca, and the top is three, and the bottom is 24 over 60, that will simplify to 7.5. And the other one was 21 minutes. So that would be 3 over 21 over 60. That would be uh, 8.57. So what's the difference in their miles per hour? is about 1.1 because it would be the second number minus 7.5. The difference would be 1.07 rounded up closest to 1.1 H. There's your test.